Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. Joe Carp. He is uh, someone that's worked with us for so long. I was wondering, Joe, uh, thanks for coming on, and you're a father, and we want to wish you a happy Father's Day, of course. And I was wondering what you're planning for Father's Day, or what are they planning for you? Uh, the answer is thank you, and <laughs> I don't know. I uh, I just go with the flow. Right. It's just you <laughs> be home, and that that's fine. Uh, I will see my sons and my wife. We're not going to go out because they know I'd prefer not to go out. So who's uh, cooking? I have no idea, <laughs> and, uh, and and you know what? It really doesn't matter. I know. Uh, it it is. Uh, I am very thankful for the job. In fact, uh, my wife's friend, I am very appreciative of being a father. And I don't need anything. I get it every day. Uh, so that, in fact, many years ago, I've absolutely demonized myself to my wife's friend's husband because I gave her a great camera as a gift. And I gave it to her for Father's Day because the greatest gift she gave me besides herself was my son's. You are diplomatic, so these, Joe. You are good. So, <laughs> so, so these guys who uh, didn't acknowledge their wives on Father's Day are now looking at me as the enemy. <laughs> but uh, that's too bad. Because too bad. But but the, the gift. The gift was becoming her husband and their father, and uh, the day to celebrate it is every day. And if Hallmark wants to label one day accordingly, I'll go with the flow. Okay, that's good. I was thinking about how many fathers are at home, though. Older men who are suffering at home, sitting there with nobody to love them or take care of them, and, and they don't have any money, and... And and there's so many things that you know that can help the older adults, especially if they are a veteran or even if they're not a veteran, but they really need some extra help. And hopefully people will, you know, take care of them. I don't know who, if you don't have a family, maybe neighbors, but somebody needs to read your articles in Boomer Times and learn so much about what can be done and what you shouldn't do, right? Yeah, and... and uh... For people in that boat, there's just so much we can do as lawyers. Uh, I I gotta because of the size of my practice and because of the relationship we have with clients and because of the fact that we desire to nurture that relationship, we get lots of calls that clients have passed away. And I saw a message yesterday that some client's son called that his dad had died the day before. And I recognized the name, and I recognized it with a sense of familiarity that I don't always have. First of all, I don't see everybody, but I read my notes on him, and I remembered him, and my final notes were his, and he had good kids, but his wife had passed away. He had come in in December. He was in excellent health. His wife had passed away in October. And the end of my note said, he's such a sweet man, but all he wants to do is die now. Huh. And he's just so alone. And I tried to encourage him to do the things that you can do to uh, get your life forward. And that there are stages of life. And unfortunately, one of those stages is being alone for a period of time when your spouse is gone and uh, how to adjust and acclimate to it uh, and that uh, it's very difficult. In fact, I, I gave him a quote, and this is an interesting line that I had read in an article in New Yorker about a year ago written by a doctor whose wife had died and, and what a friend had said to him and so meaningful to me and I bet it's it's going to be meaningful to most people, which is this friend of his said after her husband had passed away and, and she braced him for the fact that his wife has passed away. She said, I always have someone to do something with. 
But since my husband passed away, I never have anyone to do nothing with. Oh, my. Oh, that's so poignant. Isn't that, but isn't that the truth? Yes. How much time we do nothing together in the comfort and security of that psychological and cocoon, knowing that that person is there. So Father's Day is almost easy for some of these people because their children will call. They will make the attempt. It's shame on them if they don't, but they will call. They will make the attempt. The unfortunate thing is, what did they do today and what did they do on Monday? Yeah. Uh, so we try to get people to deal with their realities. I encourage people to not look at independent living as, as a, a, a slide down, but rather a new opportunity. I say, look at independent living like you looked at for your kid going away to kindergarten. He wasn't leaving home. He was going on a new adventure to learn how to deal with that part of his life and grow. And sometimes people have to come and accept that. So, and, and that's why our cards don't say attorney at law. It says counselors at law. We're, we're, try, we're doing the law. Obviously, you need legal advice, legal guidance, some direction and some in, integrity in your estate plan. And by that, I mean be honest about who you're giving what responsibilities to. Be honest about your children's relationship with each other and, and things like that. But the other thing is you need somebody who, who can you can confide in uh, to the degree that psychiatrists today no longer do counseling but merely do pill pushing. And if you want to see, and I'm not talking about all of them, but m most of them, they are, they are script people. They are MDs. They, they work on the medical aspect of biochemical, but you have to see a psychologist. Well, we try to be family counselors in the practice of law as well, talking about that and trying to get our clients to come on board and understand the all of the difficulties and that they shouldn't be angry at their children who are soccer moms and running around and can't be there and put it in perspective. Or when they say, oh, my son can't be placed in charge of this money because he doesn't know how to manage money. And when you analyze it with him, he realizes when you're done, his son has never had the opportunity to manage money. He's sending three kids to school. He's paying two car payments. He's got all of the expenses related to life and no surplusage. And, and many of my clients lose sight of that fact because they forget that they didn't have surplus when they were raising their families. Those are rough years. So that doesn't mean the broke kid is going to be responsible. You know, if he says, well, he's got a, a mortgage that he can't meet and he's driving a Lexus that he can't afford, that's another thing. But if he and his wife are driving Camrys and Accords and they're living in a, an appropriate house and the numbers are okay, but there's nothing left over. Understand that. In fact, I've had some fathers, by the way, just as an aside, and I can think of one client of mine who absolutely called me up after a Father's Day because of my philosophy of fatherhood. His kids were struggling, and they were all good, and they weren't kids. You know, they're not children. They're in their 40s and 50s. And he had resources far more than he would have ever needed for the rest of his life. And he acknowledged that because I can't make that decision for somebody. Uh, it's not for me to judge what's enough for you. And he sent each of his kids back then a $10,000 check. As he had never given the gifting that you could do back then. It was $10,000. And he sent each of his kids a note saying, Happy Father's Day. It is the happiest day of the year for me. Love, Dad, and sent each one of the three kids ten thousand dollars. Well, you know, I Joe, said, you you encourage this. That'll be in your your, right, your right. You know, you're you're that kind of a lawyer, as you said, um, a counselor, and you encourage this. And a lot of our shows, if we really replayed so many of them, you always tell that to your your clients. If you have the money, you know, help your kids and 
You can't always just do expect they're going to just get it when they die. Why not enjoy it now? And I hope in your seminars coming up that you take the same tack. And you probably do. I mean, you give them a lot of facts and a lot of figures. But I hope that you give them your soul, your being. You do that. And I think then they can see it differently from someone who they respect but also has great heart. So let me talk about the seminars. They're coming up. It's actually a Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, June 23rd, from 1.30 to 4 at Port St. Lucie Holiday Inn, and that will be by your your um, other lawyer. We'll be doing that one, Jenny right? Bernstein yeah. will be doing that. Okay, and then Wednesday, June 24th, 1.30 to 4, Palm Beach Gardens Marriott. Beautiful place to have it. And Thursday, June 25th, from 1.30 to 4, in my area, Courtyard by Marriott in Boynton Beach. So you spread yourself all around so that people have an opportunity to go there. There's no charge. You get to hear Joe Carp, who is one of the leading elder law attorneys in the country. And here he is talking to you. And you can sit there, ask questions. You just love this. Love this seminar. No reservations are required. And if you want more information, you can call 1-800-893-9911. That's 1-800-893-9911. And you go to their website. There'll be a lot of questions answered for you on that website. And that's carplaw.com, K-A-R-P-L-A-W.com. So, Joe, you know, uh, the article that you wrote, it was so well done. And I think it was important because... There are a lot of people out there who, it's not that they don't have integrity, but these people who are professional in other areas are taking something on that they really shouldn't. And I wanted to explain that about Medicaid. The Supreme Court of the state of Florida has to decide sometimes whether certain behavior is the unlicensed practice of law. And that decision isn't made to protect lawyers, but it really is made to protect the consumer. So, for example, I'll give you something that isn't. If you go buy a house, the real estate broker will put together the contract, the buyer will sell it, sign it, and the seller will sign it. Now, that's a contract. A contract, as you well can appreciate, is a legal document. So theoretically, that real estate broker who puts together that contract, one could argue, is practicing law. But the courts have clearly said, no, these are professionals who are licensed and specialists in an area, and they can, in fact, do this, even though it's consistent with the practice of law, It falls within their parameters of their professionalism, their license, and they're capable of doing it, and the public is safe. So they didn't say, no, you guys can't do it because you're going to screw the lawyers out of a fee. They said, no, you guys can do it because the public is still well protected. And I wanted to lay that as a premise so that people don't think what I'm going to be talking about now is lawyers protecting lawyers. There are a lot of people who are saying that they do Medicaid planning who are not lawyers. They do things by advising people, not what the law is. Anybody can tell you what the law is for Medicaid eligibility. It's available readily for anyone, and anybody can tell it to anybody else. The issue becomes when people say, we'll help you plan for Medicaid. We will tell you and assist you and facilitate what you need to accomplish to obtain Medicaid. And many of the people who run those businesses are not lawyers. In fact, if they are secondary businesses, it's not a lawyer doing it. It's a non-lawyer doing it. And sometimes these people say, We work with lawyers, so any legal documents that you need, the lawyer will prepare. And there were complaints lodged through lawyers, for the most part, but to the bar, complaining that a lot of this stuff was improper, 
and that the public was being harmed. The public was being harmed. And frequently it wasn't just what you might think that the person, it wasn't that the person took a fee, ran and took the money and went. But they never got the appropriate advice. They got some advice and legal documentation was done. So for example, one of the ways somebody can get Medicaid eligibility is in order to spend their money down if they enter into a written agreement with even their child to be the caregiver and prepay the child for the services rendered to care for mom or dad, even properly when they're in a nursing home. That can be done. Well, what happened is on a number of occasions, using these non-lawyers who said, we'll have a lawyer draft the agreement, but the client never met with the lawyer, didn't even know who the lawyer was, or even if they did, but so they never had relationship. They just wrote a letter to the company. Well, what did the, and then they entered into the agreement. What they weren't told and given the legal advice is, now you realize when your son gets this $200,000 and you're now broke, number one, he has to declare that on his income tax this year. Number two, or when the son is hiring a lawyer, number two, if he hasn't paid enough into Social Security, he's going to have to pay 14 plus percent self-employment tax on this. Number three, if your son's on Social Security disability, he's going to get kicked off because he's now working. Number four, if your son is collecting Social Security and is under the age of 65, it's going to impact and he's going to lose the Social Security payments that he's receiving because he's at a point where he has a, a, a loss of a dollar for every two or three that he earns. So they never tell people like this. So some people don't even know. And then mom dies five weeks later and the kids got income tax consequences when they saved barely nothing in terms of the cost. So they're preparing contacts. They're advising people as to what they should or can do without even understanding or knowing the legal alternatives. It's what's the fastest way to get it. And the Supreme Court ruled that this giving of advice on how to become Medicaid eligible is in fact the unlawful practice of law, which is a felony in the state of Florida. Now it gets a little deeper. Suppose one of your listeners said, yeah, carp's full of it, or yeah, I understand that can happen, but I used a good guy. My wife got Medicaid. Well, first of all, you don't know whether you got it under the best circumstances. Merely because you got it didn't mean you couldn't have done it in a more economical way. And I'm not talking about the fee charged by the service, but were there income tax consequences? Were there tax consequences for cashing in things that shouldn't have been cashed in? Did you cash in an annuity that had a cash surrender value that was far below the death benefit? Did you make bad economic decisions? But suppose, so you don't know that, but you say, but my guy was great. And you tell your friend, go to my guy. Do you know what you've just done? You've aided and abetted in the course of a commission of a felony. You're equally culpable. So it, it's, it's sort of like being the person who says, yeah, I'll give you the car so you can use my car to do the robbery. Hmm. I didn't do the robbery. I just gave him the car because I knew, he, you know, he said he was going to go there and stick him up. And the answer is, you don't have to know that it's the unlawful practice of law. So people have to be very careful and be aware. And when they say they're referring you to an attorney will do the work, you have to pay the, the attorney yourself, separate check. And you should demand to meet the attorney. And otherwise, you're involved in... First of all, there's a reason. Again, we go back to the fact that the premise is that the public is at peril. Now, suppose you say, my husband's gone into a nursing home. I have $40,000. I have, he makes $1,000 a month and I make $1,000 a month. And we've got a, a condominium worth $60,000. 
and I'm applying for Medicaid, and the nursing home referred me to this person to do the application. Well, that's kosher, because the person's not going to give you any advice. You're already Medicaid eligible. They're just going to be filling out a form and doing it. But the minute you're going to somebody who's giving you advice on how to become Medicaid eligible, they're practicing law. It's pretty simple. And, it's pretty simple, Joe. And, and, you're, and you're vulnerable. And even though you think you got it, you're wrong. You wouldn't go, if you've been seeing a person who is not a doctor for medical treatment, and I'm not talking about somebody who just gives you a vitamin supplement and says they're some sort of nutritionist, naturist, or something like that. But they say, you know, okay, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to treat this with that and treat that with this, and this is what I'm going to do. You wouldn't go. You wouldn't go. And if your neighbor said, hey, I know you should go to a doctor, but when I had the flu, I went to this guy and... This guy gave me stuff and meds that worked. I don't know, you know, it worked for me. You wouldn't go. Merely because it worked for somebody doesn't mean it was a wise thing to do or that the involvement was not improper and that the person will hit the mark all the time. Now, I always sit and preach, and I still do. We're talking about non-professionals altogether. And they say, I worked for the Department of Children and Families, and the nursing home recommends them, or the assisted living recommends them. They don't know why the people, how the people are doing what they're doing. All they know is they got the person on Medicaid, and therefore we got paid. Therefore, whatever they do is okay. We don't care. Hmm. Uh and that's the wrong attitude. They should be very careful. Merely because the patient lived didn't mean that the doctor did the right thing. The patient may die from something else or you may have removed too much stuff. So with this, I always say, if we analogize it to the doctor, you may love your internist, but you wouldn't have your internist do your heart tri- transplant. That's even though point. he's a doctor and even though he's licensed to do heart transplants, I mean, assuming he can get a facility to allow him, the answer, he has the license because he's a doctor and a doctor can do anything medical. You obviously are going to go to somebody who is board certified in, th- in that kind of surgery. And the same thing applies for elder law. There are a lot of lawyers out there who practice law and if I were, when I go to a lawyer, I go to somebody who does stuff the best. Who And how do I know the best? Well, I don't. All I can do is judge by word of mouth and also have they been certified as experts in their field. When I got involved, when I do real estate, I don't act as my own lawyer, and we have no lawyers in our firm who do real estate. We don't do real estate. So when I bought my house, I hired a real estate lawyer. When a client of mine dies and the family sells the house, we don't say, well, we'll take that fee. We'll handle the real estate transaction. We say, do you have a real estate lawyer? Can we refer you to somebody who can do that for you? Because we won't do it. Now, if you just want to use the broker and have the two competent real estate people do it, if you're comfortable with that, that's fine. But we don't do it because you should go to people who do it the best. So even though we're licensed to do real estate as lawyers, we won't do it. We don't do what we shouldn't do, and we believe that people shouldn't go to people who lack expertise when you're dealing with something as important as protecting and preserving the assets for the benefit of the people who earned it, whether it's the, the husband or wife or the single individual who are either in the nursing home or home to make sure they're protected and that there's the best economic ramifications. That's well that's said, Joe. Lecture. That's that's really, that's well said. Let me just say, just in summary, Medicaid planning for long-term care is a complex undertaking. Entrust this important work to a Florida certified elder law attorney and we recommend, highly recommend Joseph Carp. And just to be able to go and hear some of this, 
Let me tell you again about the seminars. Seminars are this Tuesday, June 23rd from 1.30 to 4 up in Port St. Lucie at the Holiday Inn. Wednesday, June 24th, 1.30 to 4 at Palm Beach Gardens Marriott. And Thursday, June 25th, 1.30 to 4 at the Courtyard by Marriott, Boynton Beach. This is a real gift. Please do go to his seminars. They're, they're fantastic. And there are no reservations required, so you just go there. And if you want more information, get on his website, which is carplaw.com, K-A-R-P-L-A-W.com. And if you want to call their office, it's one 800 893-9911. Well, Joe, we did it again, and I want to wish you a very, very happy um, and healthy Father's Day, and Thank you. Uh, have May fun. I add one more thing for your listeners, which is, if you come to the seminar, we will offer you an opportunity for a free consultation with one of our lawyers if we think we can help you. If you don't, you can call up, but you will pay for that consultation. So it's a good investment of your time. It will save you money. It will give you a base grant. And thank you for the Father's Day. I celebrate it every day. I text my sons good night every night, even though they are 32 and 29 years old. (laughs) That's lovely. Okay, Joe, thank you very much, and I'll talk to you another time. All right, bye.